In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at some of the new features for transport rules in Exchange Server 2010. Transport rules are a function of the hub transport role in Exchange 2007, uh, but they had some limitations. They give us the ability to restrict and modify message flow, and we just want to take a minute to look at some of the additions in Exchange 2010. We'll open up the Exchange Management Console. Uh, the transport rules are still a function of the hub transport role, and they're a, an organization-wide setting, so we find them under organization config. So Right-click and create a new transport rule, which we'll name just test, because our intent here is really just to look at the different conditions and actions and see what's changed. So far here on conditions, you know, from people, members of distribution lists, you don't have a, a lot that has changed. Here we have from users inside the organization or outside the organization, uh, and then sent to users inside the organization, outside. We have a change here, external partner or non-partner organizations. The okay? uh, reason there that we have that change is because we actually have the ability to do federated sharing, and we can set up partner relationships uh, that allow me to potentially, you know, act differently. So it's allowing me to act differently on the message when dealing with those partner organizations. We've we've still got the uh, members of distribution list and from and or between members of the distribution list. This is an added one when when the sender is. Or, or when the manage manager of any sender is this person, so potentially when a manager wanted to monitor uh, all activity in their department or something. Um, if the sender and recipient's AD attribute, uh, you know, their display name, their first name, last name, their department, their office, if that is equal or not equal. So that's, it's looking at the Active Directory attributes. We can be looking for specific words or text patterns, uh, message classifications. You know, a number of, the, number of these things are, are the same. Okay? Here's if a message type is an automatic reply. This is a new one. Auto forward, encrypted, uh, those kinds of, of things. So we've got we get, definitely got some new additions to the conditions. Uh, three of my favorite are down at the very end because I, th I thought this was a big time limitation in 2007. In 2007, you could only scan the attachment's file name for certain words or text patterns. But notice now we can scan the content. Okay, so it is going to just be certain file types. There, that's why you have this other rule or condition that says if the attachment is unsupported, then maybe we just block it or forward it to a manager uh, for monitoring purposes. Okay, so we have those uh, capabilities here. Now, one of the things that we can do, uh, or there are some changes to conditions as well. So I'm going to say here from users inside the organization just so we have something. Uh, with the disclaimer, okay, the disclaimer in 2007 had a, uh, there was much more there. There were colors and sizes and things. And the reason they don't have that anymore is because the disclaimer actually supports now full-blown HTML text, okay. Uh, full-blown HTML uh, tags, I should say, and comma, uh, excuse me, CSS, cascading style sheets uh, as well. So you can really do very feature-rich disclaimers, which were not possible before in Exchange 2007. Some of the other changes in the actions uh, really just have to do with wording, okay? Forwarding messages to addresses for moderation, uh, to the sender's manager for moderation, delete the message without notifying anyone. These are the same con actions that we had before. They just were worded uh, maybe badly, and so it was a little bit difficult to see what exactly they were going to do. Okay, So the exceptions are still the same list of conditions, uh, just if you want to make exceptions to the rule. Still running the new transport rule, but notice the disclaimer is now apply HTML disclaimer location and HTML disclaimer text. Okay, so that's just again one of the one of the changes. I wanted to point out a few of those things, especially with the disclaimers and more feature-rich disclaimers, especially with the attachments and the ability to scan the content uh, and some of the better wording. Transport rules remain a very powerful tool for restricting and modifying message flow, and it seems that they've been extended uh, and greatly enhanced in Exchange 2010.